and now like some submachine gun fires its regular attack it fires uh, two shots so you have twice so your your accuracy is lower but you have two chances so let's let loose all right critical 1.5 where's the rest of them is he dead that guy's dead yeah Ooh, enemy turn. Uh-oh. There's the... More coming from the other side. New Larry is still out. Okay, now... Okay, I'm gonna go over to... I'm gonna click on my spirit. Now, now see, AP, I can give... You can control how many action points the spirit has each turn. From one to four. Now, you might be asking, well, why wouldn't you always just give him four? The reason, you know, see that escape chance, 6%? Yeah. Let's, let's, see, let's move him up to 2 AP. 7%. Okay. Still pretty low escape chance, so I'm going to give him 4 AP. And also, controlling the spirit in itself uh, costs... Your uh, shaman has to spend one AP turn... One e AP for every turn they spend controlling the spirit. But this... All right, for and is he still is he still under my control? All righty. Let's hit him with that mana bolt first off. Ninety-nine percent hit chance. Critical hit ten percent. Hame, hame! Ah, weak four damage. But we've got some more ranged attacks, and we've got ninety-nine percent hit chance. So critical hit seventeen percent. Six damage. All right, critical hit, 12 damage, down. They have one more AP, so I'm going to move him closer to the bad guys. Okay. And also, one, one kind of nice thing is, like, your character guy, you can see him, like, he'll turn. Like, see your, your, like he's crouched there. I turn, have him face this. Turns around. Have him aim at this guy, he rises. Just a nice little detail. I'm gonna try spray and pray, see if I can hit both of them. Actually, first... First thing I'm gonna do is move close. Alright. Spray and pray. Got surprisingly high hit percent chance too. All right, they might be a little too far. I'm not sure. Well, let's find out. Okay, but I hit him twice. Okay, let's see if this guy can hit him both. Right. Hit new blade. Oh, I missed. I had over a 90% chance, too. Miss? Yeah. How hard is it to hit the sleeping man? <laughs> yeah, so how long is he crippled? Uh, a couple of turns. Okay, okay I'm going to aim shot. That'll boost me to 99%. This should be enough to put this Renriku security guard down. There you go. Okay, now he's back and on the move again. Uh oh, two more. Okay, now, now now see the escape chance rises every turn. It gets harder and harder to control. I'm gonna go for four again. Still only a twelve percent. So when they escape, they just fuck off. Uh no, then they attack. They will just automatically attack anyone who comes into their range. Which I said can still be useful to you if you move them, like you know, close, you know, in the midst of the enemy before they go nuts. And the regular attack leaves something to be desired. Oh, not all right. That's, not, that's a little better. Ah, another mana bolt. Oh, the cooldown has a zero. Cool oh, it's, okay. Now the reason notice it, notice it only has a sixty-nine percent hit chance. Yeah. That's because Mana Bolt targets their will rather than their quickness. Oh. And New Larry is a mage, so he prob so he probably has a pretty high will, because that's their main stat. So Mana Bolt would be less effective on him. 
but this big dumb orc guy, on the other hand, try that. Oh, bad luck. No, it hit, but it was a weak hit. Ow! Oh man, Sh Orc Shaman Girl's getting pummeled. Yeah, it seems like it's equally likely to... Uh, get a critical... Uh-oh, they summoned something! It's, a f it's fire. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I was gonna say it seems equally likely as to get weak hits as critical. Yeah, they're about as they're about roughly equally common, I'd say. And they're, they're both fairly common. Okay. Oops. Okay, Sam's out of ammo. See, here we go. Click this to reload. That costs one action point. Although, let's see what he's got in his bag. Ooh, he's got a frag grenade. And these two guys are just conveniently near each other. Alright. Okay, new Larry new Larry is dead. Nice. Escape chance 16% if I go for 4 AP, but what the hell. Alright. Okay, now notice his hit his hit chance against Inferno over there is pretty low. Probably because, right. you know, you know, it's a magical creature, so it probably has a pretty decent will. Let's head over this way. Oh, okay, now I can hit this guy. Now I got a clear shot at the shaman. Sh shaman. He's got a very high critical hit chance on the shaman as well, for some reason. And, and, and spells can be weak or critical, just like anything else. Ten damage to me. Oh, she is really low on hit points. I don't think it matters if... I don't think it matters if she goes down. I wonder what happens if Sam goes down in this. I never really checked it. Ooh, I'm low on ammo myself. All right, got in for, got that spirit. All right, now Sam's got a well, like Sam could go to his pistol, but I'd rather keep using the shotgun. Reload. Although they're kind of at that range, gonna have to fire the submachine gun. All right. So how many enemies are left? Well, currently there's two. These guys over here. Kind of a long shot, but if, if I could kill that shaman. All right. Nice. Escape chance twenty-one percent if I go for four. Let's live dangerously. All right. They sent six guys after you. Seven, including you. The traitor. Yeah. Well, should have sent more. Yeah, I find that a little bizarre. Oh, that probably was not the best choice of things. <laughs> Because he was a mage. Why? What's bizarre? How so? Uh, two to one odds against professional mercenaries are. Well, these people are secure, presumably security professionals as well. well. If they're security professionals, then I would definitely have more. Like, I mean, if if it's people whose professional livelihood and entire way of life is, you know, mercenary work. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Well, well, you know, they, they like, like I said, they underestimated us. Sangoma lowers her gun. I, Sam. You okay, Sam? Sam's breathing is heavy and he looks shaken. That was a hell of a thing. Part of the lie, Sam. You know that? You did, or... You don't look so good, Sam. You were born for this gig, Flandry. Me? Not so much. I think I'm gonna hang it up. Find a nice brothel somewhere. Stay drunk until I croak. How about you? 
find a safe house out of town, lay low. Renreku has a long memory. I do too. I don't forget my friends. So presumably that's why I'm living in that disgusting flop house, I guess. All right. It was all a dream. Well, he doesn't forget his friends, so... You stare at Sam's face on your comlink. Shake off the memory. Focus. Sam watch. I had your back that night, didn't I? Now I'm asking myself, who would care if I die? Who would give a rat's ass? Better or worse, your name is at the top of the list. Maybe it's the only name on the list. So I set up a dead man's switch to send you this call. I got a hundred thousand million insurance policy, payable when you find who creased me. Alive with conviction or in a body bag with justification. Either works. Contact my law firm, Rogers, Mengert, and McCain, when the job is done. They'll know what to do. He turns to his left. Chet? The camera swivels to show a well-dressed man sitting next to Sam. Pursuant to Mr. Watts' wishes, Rogers, Mengert, and McCain has installed a secure, dedicated phone line so you may contact us directly when the task is complete. We will then begin a verification process. Note that you must also be on a secure landline to access this number. We will not accept transmissions from comlinks or other devices. The camera swivels back to Sam. Okay. Sam straightens up, talks seriously. First time. Look, Flandry. I've led a direct life, and I probably left a direct corpse. I've hurt people, hurt myself. I don't know. Maybe I just want the last word. Maybe I just want someone to give a crap that I sucked air for a while. What do you say? One of my choices is a hundred thousand million buys a lot of drinks. <laughs> I'd say that I've traded my drinking Maybe buddy for a, a paycheck. <laughs> That's a bit cold. Although, I like the fact that half of the responses involve booze in some way. I'd say my, schedule, my schedule's pretty clear right now. Hope you just said yes. I've got a locator... What? Oh, go I've got a locator chip slotted in my head these days. If, when my heart stops, it'll activate. That's how you'll find me. See you on the slab. Well, Seattle can't be any worse than this. Dun dun dun! I was just gonna say I like the idea that uh, you have dialogue options when <laughs> when I'm when I'm message. talking to a recording. <laughs> yeah. The dead man switch. Your plane hits the SeaTac tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision as you step onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped backseat of a cab, following the signal from Sam's locator chip into the heart of the Redmond Barrens. Redmond Barrens is a really uh, bad neighborhood in future Seattle, full of gangs, violence. Uh, par parts of it are parts of it are actually radioactive due to a uh, the Shiawassee nuclear plant meltdown decades ago. You don't want to live there. The future of the past. Obviously. Organ organ grinders, a legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or the dead. If you're hurting bad enough for Nuyen, this is the place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This franchise is the closest thing the Barons has to a morgue. It seems this is where Sam Watts' body has ended up. You open the door and are assaulted by the smell of death and bleach. This is our first this is our introduction to Seattle, then the morgue. Or not even the morgue, the organs <laughs> the organ sales showroom. Disturbing that you I'm... just bring a body there and they'll pay you for it. <laughs> well, it's the Barons. It's you know, you know those commercials they say like you know just we'll bring we'll give you cash on the spot for your used car. Yeah. It's like that. Except it's you know for your neighbor or your used family or whatever. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty fake fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. Well, let's head inside. Well, on the, on the plus side, this this body dismemberment facility looks cleaner and more pleasant than my apartment. <laughs> ah, here's someone we can talk to. Dresden. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf, whistling a, while, whistling a tune. I, I like to imagine it was, you know, whistle while you work. Do -do 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 -do. Is that or hi-ho? Hi-ho. His broad grin says, I love my job a little more than you'd want or expect from someone in the chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. 
There's something kindly in his eyes, though it might just be a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. <laughs>